In this video, we're going to talk about uh, emission, sorry, not transmission, emission. We already did the video on transmission. We're going to talk about emission, and by emission, we mean the emission of light. Now, in standard materials, we were able to use self-illumination. It's similar. Self-illumination does not cast glow. Emission works just like a light. So it's really great for creating things like light bulbs or fireflies or lamps or suns or anything that you want to emit light. Okay, so what I've done in this scene is I put him in a dark box so we could see a little bit better the light. If the background's white, it's a little bit harder to see that this is glowing. So I gave him a, a black background, rendered him out, and you can see it. This is a cylinder with a metal cage on it, and the cylinder is has this material applied to it, 100% um, base color yellow, and then 1.5 emission hot pink. And I can you know change that color. Let's make it a little more. Ooh, that's a little kind of weird. Um, I was trying to go for a nice blue here, and I just didn't get there very easily. Okay. So I can change the color by changing my emission. Emission is going to be your main color, right? So you see how that, when that renders out, that light in my emission is mostly what casts. I don't really see a whole lot of this color. Oops, it's almost done. I'm gonna create more of a now, well, that's kind of common, isn't it? I was just trying to do something a little different. So I had the pink up there initially. Okay, let's do that one. That's kind of a cool color. Okay, there we go. So you see what's happening here? The light is emitting light waves, and as they hit, light rays, and as they hit my sprite, who has no material applied to him, he's just this material, which is base color, Let's move it up to a, to a 1 so you can see a little bit better. Um, so he's just in the dark, and he's not doing anything, and this lamp is coloring him pink because he's next to it. And that's one of the really cool things about emission, is it literally works as a light source, and you may want to use it as one, and here's why. Um, as of now, and I'm not sure about 2020, but eight, 2018 and 2019, Arnold lights do not show up as lights. Um, when we were working with the Omnis, you could see a point of light and you could put it up in the sky as your sun or your moon and it could act as a light. Doesn't work here yet in Arnold. I know they're working on it. Future iterations, you can make the light a physical object as well as a source of light, but right now you can't. So in this case, if you want to use a moon, draw a moon, make it emit, okay? So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn this all the way down to zero and render it out. And you see this is the base, the default color, no light. And that's good enough for moving on so I can stay in my 15 minute window. Okay, and now I'm going to go all the way in the other direction. I'm going to like really blow this out so you can see what happens. I mean, it's so bright that you can barely see the, the purple. You can see the purple casting a shadow on the sprite, though. Now, I want to talk about something called noise. See the rough texture, the pixelization from the light in the dark situation? There's a way to fix that. Go to your render setup and select your Arnold renderer. It'll be common by default. Pick your Arnold renderer tab. Now, right here you have samples, and you're going to see things that you recognize. This is the preview, this is the camera, these are your diffuse samples, your specular, your transmission, your subsurface scatter, your, vo your indirect volume. Samples are the number of times that the computer generates light wave, well, I can't say that, light rays passing through the scene. The higher the number, the higher the quality of the output. The lower the number, the faster the production. So you can use that to know that if you're, if you're getting noise, and noise tends to happen in low light situations, 
um, and it's a byproduct of photography actually where you have a high ISO that compensates for the low light creates noise and grain you raise this number and it reduces that the thing is it also takes longer to do additional passes so each time you see the the computer going around the screen on your image when you're rendering it out that's a sample so just to show you the difference I'm gonna go up to seven okay so I'm gonna more than double and you can also see how this has begun to increase the amount of time that it's going to take to render it out so for quick evaluations of things you may want to work with lower samples while you're while you're in production and you're trying to figure things out you might want to work with lower samples once you start presenting things to people who are going to judge what you've done you may want to render out with higher samples and once you go to work for someone and you're working you're rendering um, for film and animation to a server rather than a computer you will be able to do these things because servers work much faster than computers in terms of rendering um, and so it'll allow you to do that for now keep your samples as low as possible work with the defaults unless they're just too slow and then you can decrease them a little bit but know that it's going to increase your noise in your overall rendering you see he's just taking his time going around but it it's much improved and I kind of zoomed in here but it's much improved right we don't have the rough pixelization anymore it's really smooth that out and that's what those additional samples do nice okay and those are found here diffuse samples I'm gonna set those back to two um, so that we can get this video done and under time and then it works the same way with specular if you're having pixelated specular lights your highlights are pixelated too much you can increase that in exchange for more time all right so I'm gonna turn this back down and you always have to figure out um, what's what's the right lighting by trying a few seeing what it does and then making your tweaks as you get closer I just started off in this range from having worked with this for a while. Whoops, I, sorry. I was going the wrong direction. Okay, close enough, I think. All right, so this is pretty good. So this is, say this is what I want. This lamp is low light lamp. I like it, works great. You can see it's casting this nice glow and it literally works like a lamp. And I've got a little bit of noise, but for the sake of this course, don't, don't, don't sweat that too much. But it's good to know how to fix it okay so now I'm gonna go to my sprite and right now he's not anything um, other than I turned up his base color to one from eight and it's here's why um, close all this okay under emission I'm leaving everything white and I just want to show you this oops didn't mean to click that I meant to click this okay so I'm gonna cause him to start to emit a little bit of light let me make sure that's assigned to the sprite that I'm working with. Okay, so now when I render him out, you see what happens. Now, I'm pointing this out because if your goal is to have your audience focus on a specific character at all times, you want to lead their eye to that character, a little bit of emission causing that character to be brighter than everything else in the scene is going to help you achieve principles and elements of design in return in terms of hierarchy in terms of leading the eye you see how much different let me copy this you know how much different it is I'm gonna take this back out and render it and then we'll compare maybe I'm still thinking about it I just have so much in here now, it's really slowed it down. All right, so you see the difference? He is near this illuminated object, and it's, it's pretty cool, right? But he blends into the background. If I want him not to blend into the background so much, because he's my main character, I might want to give him a little bit of emit, emit of light. So you see the difference. And in low light situations, this really helps your character stand out. 
Okay, um, one other thing here. I'm going to give him a lot of emission. A lot of light. About, let's do 0. 0.5. And this is an example of how you would light an object. Like, he looks like a night light. He looks like something that's glowing from within. Um, he, you can still, though, see his mouth, his eyes, his arms. You can still see him. He's still a character. I haven't blown him out. You have to be careful. You can really blow these characters out, and you're going to lose definition of your character like that. And now he looks like a flat, two-dimensional plane. In fact, he's glowing so much, he's casting light on a lamp. <laughs> So you have to be careful with that. You want to make sure that you're trying things out, but you also want to make sure that what you're doing is within the realms of contrast. Whoops. Oh, that's interesting. It didn't. I lowered it, but it didn't. That's strange. Sometimes it does that. I've noticed that 3 Studio Max. It didn't let go of the high emission. That's very strange, but it does that. Um, and then one other thing, you can also attach a map. You can you can attach a map here for a mission. Um, I haven't been very happy with any of the things I've ever tried, but you can. I'll just show you very quickly. Okay, go back up. Got that in there. Render them out. And he's sparkly. That's actually the best thing I've ever done. He's pretty sparkly. I would add a bump in there. That's pretty cool. So if you're trying to go for sparkly, that is just simply a uh, image of a pile of rubies. Pretty cool. Okay, have fun. Let me know if you have any questions.